So let us define a tensor product and a direct sum, infinite direct sum of Hilbert spaces to put uh, the mathematical basis for what we need to define our uh, Fox spaces. Yeah, so may maybe let me first just uh, write down the tensor product of two Hilbert spaces and then of course this can be iterated uh, to a finite number. So assume I have Hilbert space H1 and Hilbert space H2. Uh, yeah, so these should be Hilbert spaces. In the end, they will be both the same, but of course the tensor product we can define in general. And then we say the tensor product of those guys, or the Hilbert space tensor product. I mean, there are many tensor product of many different structures. And of course, if I have uh, Hilbert spaces and I talk about tensor product, then of course I mean that I get again a Hilbert space. So, Hilbert space. tensor product, uh, which we denote by H1 tensor H2. So what is this? Yeah, so this is actually, this is given by elements of the form that I'm taking something from here, tensor something from here. Then I should take, of course, linear combinations. And then if my Hilbert spaces are infinite dimensional, I should also complete this because in principle I also need infinite sums. Yeah, but that's actually what it is. So this is the, the completion which I need if my Hilbert spaces are infinite dimensional, as they, in our context, will usually be. So I'm taking, let's say, just uh, the uncompleted version, and maybe I, for this, I just put this sign here as the, let's say, the tensor product, but not yet completed, so it's the algebraic tensor product, where I'm just taking finite sums of elements of the form xi tensor yi. Huh? So you can say I'm just taking pairs, xi comma yi, but I'm writing then this, this tensor sign. So the first element, of course, comes from the first Hilbert, Hilbert space, and the second element comes from the second Hilbert space. Huh? And then I'm just taking linear combinations of them, but just a finite number. But of course, in general, uh, I might need infinite sums, and of course, for this, I should define uh, the, the norm, or even more, I should define the inner product on my tensor product. Huh? So that's the main point. Of course, I have to, s to say on this pairs, how do I define inner product, uh, inner product? And of course, the inner product for a tensor product uh, should be multiplicative in the two terms. And that's actually so what one is going to do. So namely, uh, I take this guy here, and I put an inner product on this. And this inner product, of course, then gives me a norm. And then I can take the completion uh, infinite sums with respect to this norm. Huh? So with respect to the inner product, uh, which is given. And essentially, I only have to define the inner product between two guys of this form, because then everything else is clear by linear extension. Huh? So this is given by linear. Tension of saying, yeah, what is the inner product, let's say between x1 tensor y1 and x2 tensor y2, uh, because the x's are from uh, yeah, h1 and the y's are from h2. Uh, and then, so what, yeah, if I'm putting a product here, then it should be clear. I mean, I can only, I, I know the inner product between the x's and I know the one between the y's. So what is here should be, of course, is the inner product between the x's, the inner product in H1, times the inner product between the y's, uh, of course, the inner product in Y2. Uh, so I'm pairing this with this, times this with this. Yeah, good. So that's yeah, the only meaningful definition. That's the uh, tensor product of Hilbert spaces. And, of course, um, if H1 and H2 are the same, and here it's still an H1, but let's say they are both equal to one Hilbert space H, then I can also write this in a power form as H uh, to the power two uh, 
in a tensor product sense. And of course, one can also iterate this. But let me first say it so we write also. So if h and h2 are the same, equal to h, then I also write this as h to the power 2, but in the tensor sense. Yeah, and of course, if I know the tensor product of two terms, I can define it for any finite number of, of, of factors by iteration, or one can also write it down directly. You know? So I'm just taking uh, here products, and of course here, if I have here an n factors, and I have here n factors, then of course I'm just taking the product where I pair the first factor here with the first factor here, the second with the second here, the third with the third, and so on. Huh? So this is just iterating this. So by iteration, this definition extends uh, to a finite number n of factors yeah and then so then we have the tensor product of n Hilbert spaces h1 up to hn which I write like this and if all the h's are the same then I write it as h to the power n putting the tensor sign there huh? so the so the tensor uh, power so h Tensor n is just <coughs> the tensor product of h with itself n times. Good, so that's the tensor product, and that's, that's what I need in my construction. I need the tensor product of the one particle space uh, for any number of particles, so for any n. Huh? But I only need it for finite n. Huh? So here, there, here I, I won't have an, an infinite. Uh, tensor product. I will say a few words about this. Uh, but but what, I wa what, what I need is now that I take linear combinations of the tensor powers of n, where n is varying. Uh, but then I'm taking a, a direct sum of those guys. So and that's the second part now. Uh, so this here was the definition of the tensor product, uh, a finite uh, yeah, tensor product for a finite number of, of terms. But now I'm talking about the, the, the direct sum, which in principle we know for finite number of Hilbert spaces, but this is really what we need for an infinite number, huh? because we need it over all n, and n can run from 0 to infinity. So let me also do it in general. So assume I have Hilbert spaces, hi, by an infinite number. So they are indexed by the natural numbers. So they should be Hilbert spaces. And then what I want is their direct sum. So the direct sum of them, of the hi. So what is this? This is again a Hilbert space. And which I denied. I mean, I, I mean I, it, it's a sum, but it's also a direct sum. And in the Hilbert space setting, uh, a direct sum means that uh, the summons are orthogonal to each other. Huh? So if I write it like this, hi, then actually uh, I don't have to write down the, the inner product on this guy because this sign here tells me that, of course, on the hi, I know what the inner product is, and between different ones, they should be orthogonal. That, that's what I'm, what I'm really saying here. Uh, and so, and then of course, again, elements here, okay, I mean, I can write them as tuples, but now it's, it's an infinite tuple, so x1, x2, and so on, where the x's are coming from those space here. Uh, so the xi's are coming from hi, and I might also write this here as uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3, and so on. But now it's really an infinite sum. And of course, I must, I must uh, guarantee that the inner product uh, converges. Huh? So I mean, I, I can, of course, take here an uh, a finite sum. Then, of course, everything is finite. Then I have no problems. But if I take an infinite sum, then I must guarantee that I only consider elements for which inner products are finite. And for this, of course, uh, I need that the sum over the norms 
of the x i squared i in n is less than infinity. Huh? Yeah, because this is exactly the norm which you get from asking that the inner product between this guy and let's say itself is given by taking uh, yeah, the sum of the inner products bet between x1 and x1, x2 and x2 and so on. Uh, because uh, you don't get cross terms here in this direct sum because we, we require that x1 is orthogonal to x2. x2 is orthogonal to x, x3. Uh, that's what we are meaning here. Um, so, but maybe let me write this down so that the inner product in this direct sum that this is determined so is determined essentially by the notation that I'm using this, this direct sum uh, symbol is determined and this means that I require by the requirement that, uh, of course, the hi, which can be identified with a subspace of this direct sum, that this is orthogonal to the hj if i is different from j. Uh, so that hi is orthogonal, uh, no, not different, but orthogonal to hj for i different from j, where, maybe let me say it again, where, of course, I identify uh, the sum and hi with uh, a sub Hilbert space of this direct sum, so where we identify an x which is in hi, of course, with uh, this sequence uh, where I only have this element x sitting at the position i, so I have here 0, 0, and so on, 0, and here I have the x, and then 0, and so on. Uh, and this here is the ith uh, position. 